Good afternoon, my fellow scientists. It is Friday, June 16th, 2017, and I want to catch y'all up on the results of the all-iron battery five-cell array. The way we set this up was to fill a bunch of tubes with the different components, the anode, the cathode, and the separator, and then rig them up in series such that we got a full voltage of two volts and were able to light up an LED. So what was the ultimate performance data? Here's the first discharge starting from a fresh cell. That's EDTA on top in the presence of metallic iron. That's being oxidized at the bottom. We have iron-3 EDTA that's being reduced. It's all fresh, no, no exchange of any of the components yet, and we get a discharge of about four coulombs and a voltage declining from about two volts down to 1.8 or so. I then applied a constant voltage charge to the battery. That's the long straight line there up between 3.5 and 4 volts. After allowing it to charge for several hours, I reapplied the LED to discharge the battery. That's the drop to the open cell voltage and the slow decline around 2 volts. Let's zoom in on that region around 2 volts. So here you can see that between 2 and 4 hours of discharge, we discharge about 2 coulombs. That's something like half the original charge capacity on the battery. Maybe if I charged it longer I could have put more on, but I'm thinking that it pretty accurately reflects the performance degradation. It probably lost about half of its, its capacity between the first and second discharge, probably due to solution exchange around that kind of crummy membrane of poured agarose. So ultimately it looks like there wasn't an awesome uh, retention of the capacity, it definitely degraded over time. This battery is sort of set up to fail because the separator isn't great and the stuff on the two sides of the separator is slightly different. One side has uh, the iron and one side has the iron EDTA and as a consequence it's sort of natural that those two are going to mix and that's going to degrade the battery. So the other option is to start with it pre-degraded as it were where you just put iron EDTA across the whole cell. That gives you higher stability but no lower initial capacity and, and may actually speed the degradation of the iron steel wool. So we'll sort of play with that but it did power that LED for hours and hours, stored about two between two and four coulombs of charge per cycle and I'm pretty excited about being able to produce it. Uh, the next steps are going to be non-DIY friendly unfortunately. I'm going to have to go to like a in situ polymerized separator, which is not something you can uh, do at home. Radical polymerization is a little, a little advanced for a home chemist. And, uh, and we're going to go to some proprietary carbon sources that I can get from some collaborators that are going to probably increase the capacity significantly, but unfortunately is going to render this battery lab only. But it should still be cheap enough that hopefully it'll be useful for large-scale energy storage someday. Remains to be seen, but we'll keep you posted. In the meantime, I'm going to talk a little bit about electrochemistry and electrochemical detection and how that might work to detect disease biomarkers moving forward. I feel like that kind of thing, science, electrochemistry, and hearing about the scientific process one day at a time, tune in Monday through Friday, we give updates on the kind of progress that we like to make here in the Allen Lab.